Yeah, let's talk about pooping too, because you're mentioning all these steps with the gut. If people are coming straight into detox, you mentioned you don't like to come at it right away. Part of the reason is because if people are constipated, you can't really start binding these toxins. Binding sounds really attractive. It sounds like, oh, you've grabbed onto the toxin, but really this is not a super tight bond. Cholestyramine is a very tight bond. It's very strong, but that's a prescription binder. And there are a couple of papers on mitochondrial damage happening. So I'm not a huge fan of cholestyramine out of the gate for people if they already have chronic fatigue. Now I'm not a pharmacist. I'm not a medical doctor. So if your doctor says cholestyramine is the best, fine, go for it. But for me, when I took cholestyramine, I do think it irritated my gut quite a bit. So I was kind of fixing one thing and then irritating another. I was pulling the mycotoxins out, but then my gut became more irritated and I had more sensitivities to certain foods. So looking back what I've done it again, I don't know. I may have just leaned more on some of the natural binders. It would have just took longer. I was just desperate to get better. 100%. And so I know with cholestyramine, people that are listening, the research shows this is going to be more helpful to the mycotoxins that are produced by the aspergillus and penicillium molds. And a lot of times, if I have this right, Evan, you would know maybe a little more than me, is the specific molds aren't necessarily the big immunological issue. It's more of the mycotoxins produced by the mold. Is that correct? Well, the bigger problem with the mold itself is just when you're colonized. So a lot of people will do on the oat, you'll see that they're not colonized, but they just have the mycotoxin. So the way I say it is you kind of have three situations. Step one, you could be a mold factory. Step two, you could be a mold reservoir, or technically you could be both. You could be a reservoir and a factory at the same time. That's when the actual mold is the problem. And then that's where the antifungals come in, in addition to the binders. So you're saying... So you're saying the aspergillus or penicillium molds can be produced by your internal microbiome because of different fungal overgrowth in your body? Totally. Yeah. If you've been exposed long enough or a big enough amount of it, or your immune system is weakened by other things, whether it's like you mentioned, gut infections or Lyme or, or co-infections, if something's weakened you enough and that colony can take place, then you're in bigger trouble and just using the binders won't get you better because you haven't turned off the water hose essentially. You're still, so even if you're in a desert island situation, you're still colonized. So you're generating mycotoxins internally and binders are just going to open the drain. They're not going to stop the water pouring in the bucket. Got it. So that's where addressing the gut stuff really makes a big difference. Wiping out using specific herbs to kind of clean down the fungal overgrowth and bacterial overgrowth make more of a difference. Of course, with molds, probably more on the fungal side, correct? Yeah. And that's the cool thing about what you and I do is we use a lot of herbs that are broad spectrum, right? So it's fun because we may come in and see this colonization problem, but we're also going to come in and simultaneously be working on the bacterial overgrowth and the parasites and maybe H. pylori in the mix too, and worms and, and gut inflammation. So I would say rarely are you just going to come in and just do the antifungals. We're probably going to see many more things going on. By the time you get to a fungal overgrowth, like if you see on the note test, you'll see the aspergillus growing. By the time you get to that point, there's probably also candida. There's probably also some SIBO stuff. There's potentially also parasite infections too. So to find just the colonization so far in all the testing I've looked at, it's pretty rare. You're, you're usually going to have three, four, five infections at the same time. Yeah, totally. That makes a lot of sense.